Hi, Cole here from the Storytelling with Data team. In the last episode, I shared my first book, Storytelling with Data. Now, one question that I don't typically get directly, but that I sometimes see or hear about is, should I get the white book or the blue book? Or a variation. If I already have the white book, should I get the blue book? I, for one, think that the answer is yes. Let me grab it off the shelf. The book I'm talking about is Storytelling with Data, Let's Practice. And now I used to have, I, I still have to some extent, this fear that someone would read the first book or they'd go to a workshop and they'd get all excited, but then they'd get back to their day job and nothing would change because to get good at communicating with data doesn't just mean attending a workshop or reading a book. To get good, you have to do, you have to practice. And in this book, I guide you through that process. Let's take a look inside. So I'll start off and actually just flip right into the table of contents. And now the first uh, several chapters, actually the majority of the book are organized in exactly the same chapter structure as the first book, Storytelling with Data. Understand the context, choose an effective visual, identify and eliminate clutter, focus attention, think like a designer, tell a story. And actually each of these chapters is organized into three sections of exercises. I'm gonna tell you about these and then we'll take a look at an example. Starts off with practice with coal, where I introduce an exercise or a case study that you are meant to work through on your own, but then I also show you my solution and the thought process that went into creating it. Uh, the next section of exercises within each chapter is called practice on your own. So these are similar sort of canned examples, right? All of the data is provided, the context is there. These are all, by the way, based on real world scenarios. They've just been genericized or modified a bit to protect confidentiality. Um, I pose these to you that you're meant to solve on your own and there aren't any prescribed solutions. And then the final exercise section within each chapter is called practice at work. And the idea is, all right, you've done this with my canned examples. You've maybe practiced some more on your own. Now let's take a project that you are facing in your day-to-day -day work life and break it into the component pieces. You know, how do you think about things? How do you plan? How do you create? And really guide you through the process of communicating effectively with data and forming stories that are going to get your audience's attention and ultimately get your point across and motivate them to act. Let's take a look at one of the chapters within the books. You can get a sense. Let's look at chapter three this time, which is one that we didn't spend uh, really any time on when we looked at storytelling with data. Identify and eliminate clutter. So it starts off with just a little bit of prelude about what the thing is. And actually, I'll read this one to you because it's short. Every element we put in our graphs or on the pages and slides that contain them adds cognitive burden. Each one consumes brain power to process. We should take a discerning look at the elements we allow into our visual communications and strip away those things that aren't adding enough informative value to make up for their presence. The lesson is simple, but the impact is huge. Get rid of the stuff that doesn't need to be there. We'll illustrate and experience the power of doing so through a handful of targeted exercises in this chapter. Let's practice identifying and eliminating clutter. First, we'll review the main lessons from Storytelling with Data, chapter three. So from there, it goes into a recap 
of chapter three uh, from Storytelling with Data, clutter, cognitive load, lack of visual order. And one of the really fun things with this book was that I partnered with Catherine Madden, uh, who is an amazing illustrator and has this superpower for turning concepts into visual content. And so she did that for each of the chapters. So we have this beautifully illustrated summary of the main lessons from chapter three of the original book. So if you aren't familiar with it, the prelude we just read plus this should give you enough to get going and then you'll be able to further see the lessons put into practice through the practice with Cole exercises. Or if you've already read and are familiar with the first book, then this is just a recap that helps get you in the right frame of mind to be able to then put those lessons into practice. Back to the book. Once we get past the chapter summary, uh, we can see the outline of the exercises in the given chapter. So here, practice with Cole, uh, we have an exercise around gestalt principles, tying words to a graph, harnessing alignment and white space, declutter, and practice on your own, several exercises there, and finally, practice at work. Start with a blank piece of paper, do you need that, and let's discuss. So each of these sticky notes come through over here. And actually, one fun thing is we did full bleed edges on the spine, with the color, so you can actually flip through and use that to get to the different sections of interest. Kind of hard to do this under my camera here, but we'll flip through and look at them as well. So here we see the exercise posed and then my solution, right? So here are the Gestalt principles I identified and then I actually go through and uh, go through an example of showing how you can tie words to a graph in the second exercise and so forth. I'm just gonna flip through the pages of this chapter so you can get a sense, right? Here's a step-by-step -step declutter and then there are several more declutter exercises that you're invited to do on your own. Let's see, I think soon, yes. Now we get to practice on your own. Uh, and uh, some exercises that you can do there, right? Find an effective visual. Uh, find a, a graph you believe is effective from your own work, someone else's, the media, our website, other sources. What Gestalt principles are being used? So it gets you to really explore some of the concepts that you've practiced and that have been taught. Several decluttering exercises. And then we get to practice at work. Uh, so it's a quick exercise about starting with a blank piece of paper. Uh, another one, do you need that? Right? What visual clutter can you eliminate? Is there redundant information you could streamline? Is all of the data you are showing necessary? What could you push to the background? And then some advice for seeking feedback. Right? So this is something where you could take a project that you are working on and read through an exercise like this and then apply it real time to your own work. Let's see what else we have in this section. Ah, and then each chapter ends with a list of discussion questions. And actually, one of the ways that we uh, thought about the book being used and that we've seen the book being used is for book clubs, where people within a team or even from across different organizations will come together and read and do a chapter at a time. We should have a fun little pamphlet uh, that we've put together that helps instruct how you might go about doing that, uh, whether in person or virtually. Uh, so keep that in mind. I have a giveaway coming up in a bit where we'll talk a little bit more about the potential for book clubs. Back on the book, let's see. Oh, I have a bookmark in just a random exercise. So here we're in chapter Six. This is one of the practice with Cole exercises within the story chapter. So it's called differentiate between live and standalone stories. Uh, here we see a basic graph and then I take you through my approach, right? Start with the skeleton graph, add the goal line, build the external line, build the internal line, and then show you what that looks like. Uh, and I highlight this one because I actually used this as the basis of a recent video. Uh, I think that was top tip for better slides. So we get through what the progression might look like. And then if you needed a standalone uh, that walked the audience who is consuming it on their own through the same sort of story that you might lend in a live setting, here's what that could look like. Let's flip some more. Ah, so here, uh, 
I mentioned that the first six chapters follow the same content as storytelling with data, right? They're all exercise based. And then there are three additional chapters. Uh, chapter seven is practice more with Cole. Chapter eight is practice more on your own. And then chapter nine is practice more at work where there are additional exercises geared at each of those things that really invite you to apply the robust uh, process of storytelling with data. So all of the lessons covered up to that point. And the case studies here span a really wide breadth of different industries and examples. And there's really something to be learned from every example, even if at first blush it uh, isn't recognizable as something coming from your world, right? And actually there can be benefit to practicing in spaces that are separate from what your day-to-day -day work looks like. Just helps you break free from some of the perceived constraints I think that we impose upon ourselves when we're in the middle of our normal stuff. Uh, and then that has positive repercussions for then when you do take a lens back at your daily stuff and can start to uh, weave in things that you've tried uh, or experimented with and found useful in this practicing. Um, so lots of great stuff there. And that brings us through to the end of the book. So I'd say if any of this sounds intriguing, uh, to add to the excitement, I have a couple of special giveaways. First, I'll just ask that if you know someone who could benefit from this book, please share this video with them. I'll also mention that our online storytelling with data community builds on this idea of practicing in a safe environment. There we run a monthly challenge. We also have an exercise bank uh, that anyone can access at any time. The really cool thing there is when you take the time to solve an exercise and share your solution, it unlocks all of the solutions that others in the community have shared, including those from the Storytelling with Data team. So the learning doesn't end with the practice. You also get the chance to compare and contrast to others' approaches. On the giveaway front, I would love to share this book with those who will commit to sharing it with others. And so if you are a manager, who would share it with your team, or an instructor who would like to use it with your students, or an individual contributor who might do something like start a book club or lend it out to others on your team. Leave a comment with why you and your team or organization need it and how you plan to use it. Do that within a week of posting, and we'll pick five deserving recipients who will each get a signed copy of Let's Practice and some useful and fun related swag. Alternatively, if you'd like to simply order Let's Practice and add it to your library, click on the link that just appeared. Before I wrap, I'll mention that we have some exciting new content coming for you soon as we prepare for the official release of my new book, Storytelling with You, Plan, Create, and Deliver a Stellar Presentation. I'll actually suggest that you pause here and take a moment to pre-order that, uh, and then stay tuned for more great stuff. Thanks very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.